Tip number one, master the basic fundamentals of kicking, handball, ground balls, marking, and tackling. There'll probably be no surprises there, and I don't need to go into detail uh, onto why they're important. Number two, work on both sides of kicking and handballing. Uh, number three, read the game and make sure you're watching tape with mentors or those that uh, have got more experience in playing the position that you uh, want to get drafted in. Moving over to conditioning. Uh, number 11, work on your aerobic capacity, running either longer efforts for those that are aerobically pretty fit and you're more an endurance-based athlete, or if you're more of a speed-based athlete, do uh, work on your aerobic capacity with shorter distances and shorter time so like longer intervals would be somewhere around four minutes with short rest periods like 30 seconds to a minute where more your speed based athletes uh, you might do things like fart leg for your aerobic capacity 45 seconds on 15 or 30 seconds off and, and build up your fitness that way so you know, keep up the quality uh, number 12 improve agility by training change the direction so make sure you've got a good understanding of how to power cut on both sides um, both left and right, um, but also uh, you can um, practice your forward and backwards acceleration, your shuttle 180 turns. Moving over to professionalism slash preparation. Um, so we've got number 17, develop a week, weekly game day routine. So I think it's quite common to have a game day routine on the day or perhaps the day before, but we want to get in the mindset like an AFL athlete where you actually have got a weekly routine and that um, flow of what you do with each day. It should have a theme and it should feel really familiar because you've practiced it. So have a weekly theme um, that starts from the day after plus one from game day. That's day one. And then it goes all the way through till game day. So you should have a, a focus area, both physical but also mental on um, important themes to get yourself recovered from the previous game but also prepared for the upcoming game. Moving over to elite performance mindset, mental resilience for number 24 to cope with setbacks. Um, number 25, develop growth mindset that embraces challenges and sees failure as a stepping stone. So we want to make sure we've got that mindset uh, and it can be really challenging at times, particularly when you're facing injury or maybe you've got drop from the side, you're not playing the position you really want to. There's going to be always continual challenges uh, in football. So having that growth mindset is going to, that you're going to um, get better from that opportunity and, and you're going to be able to um, really uh, maximize your development with that mindset. So that's really, really important. 29 is elite lifestyle. Um, follow a well-balanced diet, real food, and locally sourced. So if you can um, pr get your produce, if you're living at home, see if you can compare it, you can get your greens, your fruit, and your meat locally sourced like a farmer's market would be really, really, um, because it's usually going to be seasonal, uh, it's going to be more fresh, uh, and hopefully the um, process that it's been to um, be delivered to you is more uh, natural rather than uh, pesticides. Moving over to Leadership 34, showcase through actions and attitude. Uh, yeah, number 35, encourage and support your teammates. Uh, so be a really good teammate, 35, to display strong, open, and honest conversations. This can be quite challenging at younger age, but um, when you see a, perhaps a standard that was missed, make sure you address it straight away um, and get into that um, practice of having those challenging conversations. 36, familiarize. So this is moving to more combine and draft trials uh, test. Um, we want to focus on familiarizing yourself with the test, so the 2K time trial, the yo-yo, uh, your vertical jump, all these tests, you want to practice them. You have, you're have you really clear in your strategy and you know exactly, particularly the endurance events, uh, what you're aiming for and what you need to hit per lap to be able to pace yourself so you don't um, blow up too early or you don't undershoot and, have, and finish the test with more uh, left in the tank. Moving over into life, balance AFL with outside commitments. Um, make sure that you're, you're valuing things outside, so like your studies, um, 38, display uh, humility on and off the field, so being a good person. 39, have a hobby you love outside of the game. I think this is really important from a longevity point of view. So if you can start this at a young age, it's going to only pay dividends um, where it might be a different sport that you just enjoy watching. It could be something completely different to um, football altogether, um, like surfing, for example. 
47. This is moving more into the strength specific uh, tips. Learn great technique for the squat, the press, the pull, and the hinge. They're four fundamental lifts in the gym. So making sure uh, you're really competent in those and have a coach teach you those four fundamental move patterns. It's only going to make life easier when you're in the AFL system. Uh, and it's going to not, not only from a physical point of view, um, easier on your body, but also you'll be able to get some um, better performance results um, when you're in that program, when you know how to what a successful squat feels like uh, for you.